We're joined this morning by, uh, first by uh, John Podesta, who is President and CEO of uh, Center for American Progress, a progressive think tank dedicated to improving the lives of Americans through ideas and action. He served as Chief of Staff to President Clinton from 1998 to 2001 and is currently the visiting professor of law at Georgetown Uni uh, University Law Center. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm um, outgunned by all uh, this uh, outstanding group of professional educators, but at least there's one other lawyer sitting here with me, so <laughs> I'll try to hold my own. Um, you've you've, uh, you've got my training. written testimony. Right. Let, me, <laughs> let me offer uh, just a bit of context, and then I want to offer three specific recommendations for improving teacher and principal quality in our schools. Uh, to start, I think it's critical to recognize that the deficiencies in our public education system pose long-term threats to the well-being of our people and our economy. Uh, the U.S. suffers from twin achievement gaps. There are large disparities in educational attainment and readiness within our country, uh, particularly between low-income and racial and ethnic minorities and others. Uh, and at the same time, American students as a whole are falling behind their counterparts in other developed nations. I could go through a lot of statistics, but the committee knows them well. Our nation just can no longer tolerate the status quo of undereducated children and declining economic competitiveness in the world. Uh, second, nothing matters, I think, more to improving the educational opportunities of our students than finding and retaining highly qualified teachers and principals. A 2006 report by Dan Goldhaber for the Center for American Progress found that a very good teacher, as opposed to a very bad one, can make as much as a full year's difference in learning growth for students. Furthermore, the effect of increases on teacher quality swamps the impact of other educational investments, such as reductions in class size. Unfortunately, I think we're not doing enough to recruit and retain the best teachers available. Uh, and I would note that shortages of qualified, effective teachers also have a disproportionate impact on low-income and minority students they're about twice as likely to be assigned to, uh, inexperienced students in our country today. Uh, Congress, I think, has a real window of opportunity to address the challenge of teacher quality with the unprecedented number of teachers who are expected to retire uh, and the recruitment challenge that, uh, that you know, comes with that. Uh, according to the National Commission on Teaching in America's Future, two million teachers will leave their jobs within the next decade. The country has a huge recruitment challenge uh, and so it's imperative, I think, that we experiment with innovative initiatives that will increase the supply of quality teachers and principals. The TEACH Act introduced by the chairman and Senator Kennedy on the Senate side, I think, would do just that. It puts federal money and commitment behind the programs designed to experiment with better ways of identifying, preparing, and compensating teachers and principals. Developing a better teacher workforce will require three key steps, improving the quality and use of data and decision making, creating more competitive compensation structures for teachers, and relying more on teachers as resources for innovation and identifying and correcting problems. If I, if I have a bit of time, let me speak briefly about each of these areas, and I direct you to my written testimony for a more detailed analysis. With respect to better data, I would say that with reli without reliable information, we simply cannot evaluate results uh, or properly assess school performance. Better data is also useful for measuring the effectiveness of preparation programs for teachers and principals, developing more sophisticated career advancement systems, more equitably deploying teacher workforce. States and, and local districts are experimenting with this across the country. I would point you to Chattanooga, Tennessee, for example, where, which uses value-added data to identify highly effective teachers and then provides them with economic incentives to teach in the highest need schools. Uh, with respect to competitive compensation, we need to acknowledge that job structure and financial rewards are key motivators for employees in any profession. Accounting for educational attainment, teachers are drastically underpaid compared to those of similar backgrounds in other professions. We cannot expect the best unless we're willing to pay for the best. States and districts need to reform pay and performance structures to improve starting salaries, to attract talented mid-careerists and young people committed to career and education, Similarly, if a teacher or principal is taking on more challenging subjects, teaching in tougher schools or delivering positive results, we should recreate rewards for them as the TEACH Act would do. And we need, uh, as, as we make starting salaries more competitive and increase incentives for retention, we should keep in mind that we need to respond to poor performance by fairly and effectively removing ineffective educators. Finally, with respect to teachers as go-to resources, 
uh, the President and the Congress need to act on the premise that teachers and principals are public education's most valuable assets. Policymakers should seek direct input from teachers on issues such as quality of development programs, school conditions, and administrative support. Uh, we recently at the center had Governor O'Malley, uh, who uh, to track, uh, to, is planning to build on his successful initiatives with CityStat in Baltimore uh, to track student performance and to carry out surveys among teachers every two years to identify problems, to evaluate effectiveness of educational initiatives, to track progress and results and to effectively and efficiently direct resources based on need. We should consider implementing a similar program, I think, at the national level. With that, I'm out of time, so let me uh, turn it over to Joel.